Look, I like talking and writing and thinking about global warming, but I'm not an expert. I'm a pundit, just like David Suzuki. He's a PhD, but in genetics of fruit flies. Why don't we talk to an actual PhD in meteorology, someone who's worked in government, in the environment department. Well, we have such a man with us today. His name is Dr. Madhav Kandekar, and he joins us in studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, sir. Well, now, your background is in hard math and physics and sciences, and you received your PhD in meteorology. You actually worked for Environment Canada for a, a for period of time. For about 20 years. For 20, 20 25 years. years yes. What were you doing with Environment Canada? I, I was a research scientist there. I used to work on various issues in climate, climate change, but some of the main things that I did before I retired was I developed a operational ocean surface wave model, and that was put in operation at Montreal operational system and I also wrote a small book on prediction of ocean waves on a small time frame like 12 hours to 24 hours 36 ah. hours you see now you've also written uh, in peer reviewed journals about things like el nino and other climate I issues have, am i, I right have, yes yes el nino is one of my favorite topics and that's that warm recent. wind that uh, yeah. that it comes is, it is actually what we say is it's a warm water it comes on the west coast of south america mm because of wind conditions in the central equatorial Pacific. Now that's and, been going on for, for as oh, long that is, as... That, that is for several hundred years, yeah. you see. And people keep saying that global warming may change its structure, but no. Uh -huh. I think the latest paper that has come out, and I've started reading about it, that they have analyzed El Nino and the rivers called La Nina for last 150 years and they don't see any change. So I think we will continue to have this El Nino and once we have an El Nino, we have all kinds of weather. Normally Western Canada becomes warmer during winter while all the way Indian monsoon becomes weaker during an El Nino. So mm. there are lots of interesting aspects of this El Nino that we do not fully understand. Well, let's talk about uh, something that is at the center of the theory of man-made global warming, and that is that carbon dioxide, especially carbon <laughs> dioxide produced by people, is responsible for global warming. Now, even if we took that at face value, the amount of CO2 made by all human activity is a drop in the bucket compared to natural CO2 emissions. But let me ask you, doctor, as a, a PhD meteorologist, someone who worked for 20 years in Environment Canada, what is your expert scientific opinion about the proposed link between CO2 levels in the air and global warming? I think it hasn't been pro proved or documented beyond a shadow of doubt. There are lots and lots of papers that have come out in the last 25, 30 years. And the reason behind this is that a well-known American geophysicist, Roger Ravel, proposed more than 40, 50 years ago that more CO2 in the atmosphere due to industrial activity could warm the Earth's climate. But towards the end of his career, Roger Ravel unfortunately passed away with a massive heart attack. But he wrote a short article saying that the issue is very complex. And so we need not worry about it. Not only that, Roger Ravel also said that carbon dioxide, higher carbon dioxide concentration is good for agriculture. It is not a well, pollutant. It's plant food. I mean, it is when not I was a pollutant. A kid. It is good for agriculture. Uh -huh. It has enriched world forestry. So, what has happened, unfortunately, since Ravel's passing away, climate scientists and especially modelers keep crunching out numbers that if CO2 keeps on increasing like that, we will have a four degree warmer climate in another 50 years, 100 years. We don't know that. Well, in I got a question for you. I mean, we know that the earth has warmed and cooled and warmed and cooled and warmed exactly. and cooled before because, I mean, we've all heard of the ice ages, Correct. plural, and we know that we're not in one now. So something has been causing the planet to warm and cool. And I don't think we could blame, you know, cavemen for lighting little fires to roast Correct. whatever they found in the so let me ask you this. What is, in your estimation, the reason that the Earth has warmed and cooled naturally over millennia? Yeah, I think this is what I like to think, and many climate scientists or climate skeptics, as we are being called, now feel the same way, that Earth has warmed and cooled in the historical past, in the geological past, on its own, particularly, and we believe, or 
not me particularly, but I think I'm more of a meteorologist, but there are a large number of solar scientists, as we call them, you see. They work with the sun's variability output and all that, and they feel strongly that it's the sun that ultimately drives the Earth's climate, not CO2. Mm. Well, so the human added CO2, again, as you mentioned earlier, is a very small component. Well, doctor, I want to ask you this. I mean, you are as credentialed as anyone I've ever met in who talks about the theory of man-made global warming. 20 years with Environment Canada, actually building scientific models. You told me about predicting waves on a short period of time. Yet, I would put it to you that for every one, for every million Canadians who's heard of David Suzuki, a fruit fly expert, maybe one has heard of you. Why are you not a media celebrity. My theory is because you have the wrong opinion and you're a rebel, whereas the, <laughs> the cool kids all say global warming is happening because we're breathing out CO2. Has the science and the science journalism been hijacked by the activists on the other side? Well, I think that's a little <laughs> difficult question to answer. What has happened is because of this thrust on this about this environment and especially environmentalists like David Suzuki who keep pushing that and oh, Al we, Gore must, and yeah, other we, politicians. Must, we must reduce CO2. I don't see the reason for that. Mm -hmm. I have lived part of my life in India where the only climate event on an annual basis was the monsoon. Mm -hmm. If you get a good monsoon, everything is hunky-dory, mm -hmm. people are happy. Mm -hmm. If you get a bad monsoon, not mm -hmm. enough rain, food is shortage, water mm -hmm. supply is shortage, and it's all kinds of problems. Now, I study monsoon even as a retired guy, and I have studied monsoon extensively. The monsoon, summer monsoon, hasn't changed at all in last hundred years. Mm -hmm. So I think the global warming may be occurring. I don't deny that. Mm -hmm. But it's impact is so minuscule mm -hmm. that I think we have overly been concerned about it. I think I feel honestly that David Suzuki is overly concerned about it. I don't see any problem about mm -hmm. global warming. Well, he, Even if it warms by another, will it warm four degrees? No. In 100 years? No. Could it warm another half a degree in 50 years? Quite possibly. It is even possible that we could be getting into a cooling. Lots of solar scientists are now saying that the sun is entering into what is known as a grand minima. Mm. The sun's energy is depleting. Mm. Some of them like to say, oh, the sun is taking a long nap now huh. for next maybe well, day. I hope not, are... because it's cold enough <laughs> in Canada. I, I, I know. <laughs> Listen, doctor, I very much appreciate you coming on the show. I think the fact that you take a nuanced approach and that you express some doubt, as all scientists should, tells me all the answer there because you're not in the fundraising business like David no, Suzuki. I'm not. You're I in the like science business. Science. Yeah. yeah. I, I like wish to more science. I wish more climate uh, yes. scientists were really like Exactly. Thanks very much for being here today. Okay. Very good. Thank you for inviting me.